Hey guys, welcome to Jay Hauser Writes. Today we are going to be talking about books and I would love to hear opinions both from readers and writers. So let's get into a deep discussion and I want to hear your comments down below. Make sure to subscribe as well. I appreciate your support on my newer channel and let's just dig right into it. Trigger or content warnings. Are they in books? Should they be in books? Who's responsible? What are the pros and cons? Let's get into it. So I'm going to say trigger warning, but it's synonymous with content warning in my mind right now. So sensitive material within a book. Now this is something that has been done for movies and shows for eons, right? It's TVMA, it's rated R, especially in the US. I'm sure different parts of the world rate things differently. Well, I know they do, but they give you a content warning. You know, you're on Netflix, and you're going to see TVMA and it's going to say for drugs, sexual content, that kind of stuff. So you might ask, why is that not done in books? I had this discussion with some friends the other day and it was a great discussion and I'm sure there's a lot more viewpoints and questions that could be asked and that's why I kind of wanted to put it in a more public format to be able to reach you guys. So why isn't it in books? I was thinking that, you know, there are movies from my teenage years that I should not have watched <laughs> and I have those, those visuals burned into my head, right? And I just thought, you know, books don't do that the same way for me. I, I can forget those scenes a little bit more. They fade a little easier over the years. And you know, the person I was talking to said, it's the complete opposite for me. There are things that I've read that I can't unimagine. And you know, I think it just depends on the way our brains work. So the question is, should the author be doing it? Should the publisher be doing it? And when I asked that question, are we saying it should be mandated? Are we saying they should do it as a way of marketing or as a courtesy to the reader? There's a lot of questions to consider. So let's go into the pros and cons. I'll talk at the end about what I am planning to do as an author and the trends that are happening right now that I'm seeing and what I think should happen, in my opinion. One major pro is that you are getting the right book into the hands of the right reader. So if you have in your book, um, you know, gratuitous violence, on-screen sex or rape, you know, if you have that kind of thing in your book and you have no any indication of it anywhere and someone picks up your book, and it's halfway through enjoying it, and then they come across this visceral scene that traumatizes them or brings up old problems, did you get your book to the right reader? Because they might not finish that book, give you a bad review, and not recommend it to other people. So would it have been better that it didn't get to their hands in the first place? Of course, I mean, you got a sale, congratulations. But, you know, word of mouth, reviews, that kind of thing, and just knowing that you were taking care of your reader that's one thing to consider is it can be used as a marketing tool to make sure you get it into the right hands, not into the hands that would not appreciate it. It kind of goes along the lines of having a fantasy book that has tons of romance on it, but nowhere in the title or the book cover or the description or the classification does it say that it's a romance or has a heavy romantic subplot. A lot of fantasy readers are going to pick up that book and be disappointed because they don't really care for romance. They want the adventure. They want the magic. So you don't want to give the wrong expectation. You, you want to find the right people. And then the question is, is it just plain considerate for an author and or publisher to put that on there for people to know? So in the camp of the cons, why you wouldn't want to necessarily put a trigger or content warning on your book is because it may give away too much of the plot. That's one thing that I've heard before and, and I can understand that. You know, you think you're going into this adventure and you don't realize there's this horrible torture scene or there's this horrible gory thing that just like makes a character snap. And if you put something as a trigger warning, people might realize like, okay, well that's gonna come up. So I guess I'll just kind of sit and, and wait for it. You know, it's it's spoilery. One argument that I've heard is that life has no trigger warnings. So books shouldn't either, which yes, though movies do. So it's a regulatory thing for movies and shows. Why it's not for books, you know, that's a very different medium. But some people, especially those who are not sensitive to stuff, they say, you know what? It's important that we read this kind of stuff because crap happens. Bad stuff happens. And that's true. And I would say the last con that I've heard is that it takes the book and it sums it down to the worst parts of it and contains the experience. You might hear about this wonderful adventure and it just so happens to have a traumatizing rape in there. And you know, you see that tagline that says trigger warning rape and all of a sudden this is a book about rape when it's, you know, literally one page and maybe it's not the focal point of the book at all, but because it's on there, some people will feel that, you know, you've tainted the experience. The question moves on to who is responsible to be aware of what's in the books? Should the reader be responsible for what they pick up and knowing what's in there? I myself usually read several reviews, but I'm also the kind of person that I don't mind spoilers. Sometimes I, 
ask for spoilers. Um, but that's, I think, just my anxiety. Should we force the reader to go searching if there is sensitive content that they don't want to read and maybe spoil the experience that way? Because they're going to be subjected to other information in those reviews. And in the end, whose job is it to get that book into the hands of readers? Are readers responsible for doing that? Because aren't the authors and publishers the ones that are marketing? Isn't it the business of the person putting out the product to get it into the hands of the consumer and not force them to work for it? So question to consider is, would you like to see a rating system like, you know, mature, you know, like we have in movies here in the US where we've got PG, PG-13, rated R, up and down on both of those. <laughs> Or would you just like to see a tiny little tagline that says trigger warnings, these things in there? I will say as a writer, I have worked with other writers as critique partners exchanging our work. And more than once, I did not ask up front, hey, does this have any trigger warnings? Because a little blurb that they gave me did not tell me about that. And so I am halfway through this book and explicit sex is about to come on the page. Or, you know, I see on page rape or murdering babies. And I mean, these are, like I said, multiple books where I have read this stuff and I was not given any heads up. And for me, I, I wouldn't choose to go to a bookstore, pick up that book and read it. I like things that are a little less intense for the most part. And so I've started to ask, and I do see some when they're promoting their books saying, Hey, this is mature content, 18 plus only. And you know, I really appreciated that. I am definitely over 18, but we all have our own taste. So talking about the trend, what I'm seeing happening is I do see it happening more and more with those that are self-publishing. Now, some of that can just be, I think, generational, millennials, Gen Zs, as we come into this, I think we kind of think on that level more of putting out warnings and it is very PC in a way. I do think that it will probably stretch more towards traditional publishing as things go along. We're going to get to some more aspects here, but my opinion personally is I appreciate it being there as someone who has struggled with things in their life, who has mental health issues, who's gone through trauma and not nearly as bad as some other people. I appreciate knowing ahead of time kind of the worst parts of a book, which I mean, that sounds bad, but you know, even, even language, if I know that there's going to be, you know, a thousand F-bombs in the book, that's not my cup of tea. And I appreciate knowing and not wasting my time or money grabbing that book. Will I put a content warning on all of my books? No. Now, part of that is because some are definitely more intense than others. Do I feel that this should be a regulated matter? You know, movies and TV shows, for the most part, they have to. There are some that are not rated, but they still have to go through some sort of legal process to be able to even do so. And I don't feel like the publishing industry should be forced to conform to that. I feel like that's something that's going to be consumer driven in a way of having that voice. And just as society trends towards that way, I don't feel like it should be forced on the author or the publisher, but I would like to see it more done as a choice. Even if it's not physically a tagline on the book, maybe in the online listing, you know, under the listed ISBN or something, just something small that if you care about it, you can look for it easily and find it. Now, what would I be putting on my books? So I'm thinking of my upcoming trilogy that I'm going to have the debut book number one coming out this year. And you know, we've got assassins, we've got war, there is some torture, there is some self harm, there's, you know, violence, but how much am I going to put in there? I found a website out there that does have trigger warnings for books. It, it kind of look a little cumbersome on that website to search through, but it lists like literally everything. So there's, you know, ableism and fat shaming and racism. And I mean, there's so, so many things that can be triggers for people that they can find distressing. And you have to decide what you're going to put on there. Because if you have 20 trigger warnings, you might be focusing on the wrong things and giving some things too much importance. For example, if my book has some fat shaming and also has rape and violence, I am, I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to put fat shaming unless that is the central focus of the book is someone with their weight struggle, then I mean, that should be pretty obvious in other ways. But for me, as someone who's been fat, as someone who has been mocked and gone through plenty of hard times about that, even as I was a kid, that's not as big of a thing to me. Everyone's different, but some things are weighed more heavily than others. And if you just slap them all in a line of saying trigger warnings, then you have to ask yourself, 
do they all carry equal weight? You also have to weigh out what is the severity in the book. How much on page time or screen time does the event have? If rape is only alluded to or barely mentioned as a part of someone's past to help understand their anxieties about something, that's not the same thing as having a three page very graphic description of something that is currently happening. So you have to weigh, am I going to put it on there just because it's at all a theme at all? Or, you know, that it's much more significant. If the whole book is about the trauma of overcoming that kind of attack, I'm just saying it's complicated. The last thing I will say about this, I know this is kind of a long discussion and I, I know there could be a lot more talked about, but you have to ask yourself, how much do you need to focus on that little line with warnings compared to how much weight the other things that the book has pulls for it. So your book cover, does it allude to main themes and are those themes part of the trigger warning? If you read the title, do you have a hint about what's going on? If your book is about a 13 year old that is morbidly obese being shamed and overcoming their struggles and your book title is called Jenny's Fat Diary, you probably know that it's about that. So you wouldn't necessarily need to add a trigger warning because people understand what they're getting into when they go for it. Also taglines and blurbs. My book has to do with assassins. So literally the first line in, on the back cover blurb of my book, I'm gonna read it here, is avoiding assassination wasn't on Melody Walters to-do list for her junior year. So you know right away it's about assassination. If you need a trigger warning about violence, you should probably make that connection yourself. There is a really cool concept that I love, I'll talk about in a moment, but just a reminder, you know, comment down below. There's a lot of questions, there's pros, there's cons. My opinion is not gonna be yours. Might not even be the popular opinion. I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, ah, oh, you pansies, you need to not be so sensitive. You know what, I am a sensitive person, so that's my personal perspective. The concept that I love is making alternate versions of your book. Now, this is something that things like, gosh, so many streaming services, the one that comes to my mind is VidAngel. So you can go on there and watch mainstream movies and literally, click like I want edit out this kind of content. So they might bleep out your words or take out a scene with something that's graphic and you as the consumer get to alter your experience. What if it was like that released by an author that you have this book that you can easily edit it out some of that swearing or even just tone it down to you know maybe less less harsh swearing and that steamy bedroom scene can be moved and alluded to more behind doors, right? And you can have your rated R version and you can have your PG-13 version and release them as separate editions. I would eat that up as a consumer because there are so many books that I would love to read, but they just get too dark for me. And I don't like a lot of abrasive swearing. And I, you know, I think that's part of why I wrote my series is write what you want to read. And I went in that direction. So mine doesn't have a lot of swearing and the swearing that it does have is very intentional and more on the mild side. And you know, there is violence, but I cap where I'm willing to go with that. And there is, you know, assault and self-harm and that kind of stuff, but I cap the kind of thing that I want in there. Now, would I personally make option A and B? No, that's my personal preference. Um, I already get squeamish <laughs> when I have my friends beta read my books and I just think, oh, there's that, you know, really heated makeout scene and I'm just like, oh, cringing over here. And I just remind myself, you're not reading this over the church pulpit, it's okay. But you know, I could write an erotic scene. I know I could, but I just, oh, that's again, personal preference. But I would love if other authors would do that. And not just to, you know, pacify the pansies, but think about the fact that you're opening it up to a much wider market. You're opening it up to all the people that are like me that are not reading a good amount of modern literature because there are just certain aspects that they can't get past. But just like all the legal battles with filtering services, stepping on the artistic rights of movies being filtered through these filtering services, you know, you have to say, are you stepping on the feet of authors and publishers for what their vision was? They wanted something that was more intense and they shouldn't have to change it just because you want something that's milder. And again, that's true. Like I'm saying, whether it's sugar warnings or putting out alternate versions of books, I don't think that should be regulated, but it's an opportunity. And I'm asking you, would you like authors to take those opportunities? I would love to see it. So again, love your comments. Please subscribe, check out my website down below and sign up for my newsletter for 
information about my upcoming books, works in progress, promotions, all that great stuff. I appreciate and hope that we can get you to even share this and get some real conversation. I know my channel is really small and I'm just getting started, but this is the kind of thing that I feel like it's important to discuss, especially as it starts to trend. So thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful day.